production. Background Extreme Rules is an annual gimmick event produced by WWE since 2009. The concept of the show is that the event features various matches that are contested under hardcore rules and generally features one Extreme Rules match. The defunct Extreme Championship Wrestling promotion, which WWE acquired in 2003, originally used the Extreme Rules term to describe the regulations for all of its matches, WWE adopted the term and has since used it in place of Hardcore Match or Hardcore Rules. On October 25, 2021, WWE revealed its 2022 major event schedule for the Raw and SmackDown brands, with a to-be-announced event for October. On June 13, 2022, that October event was announced as Extreme Rules and it would take place on Saturday, October 8, 2022, at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia was the home of the former ECW promotion from 1993 to 2001. This marked the first Extreme Rules to be held in October and on a Saturday, as well as the second Extreme Rules held at this venue after the 2019 event. It was the 14th event in the Extreme Rules chronology and aired on pay-per-view worldwide and the live streaming services Peacock in the United States and the WWE Network in international markets. Storylines The event included matches that resulted from scripted storylines, where wrestlers portrayed heroes, villains, or less distinguishable characters in scripted events that built tension and culminated in a wrestling match or series of matches. Results were predetermined by WWE's writers on the Raw and SmackDown brands, while storylines were produced on WWE's weekly television shows, Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. At SummerSlam, Liv Morgan defeated Ronda Rousey to controversially retain the SmackDown Women's Championship. Rousey had Morgan in the armbar submission while Rousey's shoulders were on the mat and the referee counted a pin but did not see Morgan tap out before the three count. Following the match, an irate Rousey attacked both Morgan and the referee, which resulted in the suspension of Rousey. After her suspension was lifted, Rousey won a fatal five-way elimination match on the September 9th episode of SmackDown earning a rematch against Morgan for the SmackDown Women's Championship at Extreme Rules. The following week, Morgan decided that she wanted to defend the title against Rousey in an Extreme Rules match and Rousey accepted. At Clash at the Castle, Seth Freakin Rollins defeated Matt Riddle. During Rollins' match for the United States Championship on the September 19 episode of Raw, Riddle distracted Rollins, costing him the title. Later that episode, Riddle challenged Rollins to a fight pit match at Extreme Rules and Rollins accepted. On October 1, it was revealed that UFC Hall of Famer Daniel Cormier would be the special guest referee for the match. In early August, Karrion Cross and his wife Scarlett made their return to WWE and immediately began to target Drew McIntyre. Over the following weeks, Cross continued to attack McIntyre but he would retreat before McIntyre could retaliate. On the September 23rd episode of SmackDown, McIntyre announced that WWE officials granted him a match against Cross at Extreme Rules in a strap match, thus ensuring that Cross could not retreat. After Bianca Belair retained the Raw Women's Championship at SummerSlam, she was confronted by a returning Bailey, accompanied by Dakota Kai and Io Sky. The trio would dub themselves as Damage Control. At Clash at the Castle, Damage Control defeated Belair's team in a six-woman tag team match in which Bailey pinned Belair. Due to pinning the champion, Bailey challenged Belair to a ladder match for the Raw Women's Championship at Extreme Rules and Belair accepted. After WrestleMania 38 in April, Edge formed a group with Damian Priest called the Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley later joined the group at WrestleMania Backlash, followed by Finn Balor, who was defeated in a match by Judgment Day. Balor would then become the new leader after Judgment Day viciously attacked and turned on Edge. Dominic Mysterio would also later join the group after turning on his father Rey Mysterio and Edge at Clash at the Castle. 
After weeks of feuding and a brutal attack on Edge by the Judgment Day, Edge returned on the September 26 episode of Raw and challenged Baylor to an I Quit match at Extreme Rules and Baylor accepted. At Clash at the Castle, Gunter defeated Sheamus to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Imperium then defeated the Brawling Brutes in a six-man tag team match on the following episode of SmackDown. The following week, Butch and Holland won a fatal four-way tag team match, also involving Kaiser and Vinci to earn a match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship on the next episode, but failed to win the titles due to Imperium interfering. On September 29, a six-man tag team good old-fashioned Donnabrook match between the two teams was confirmed to take place at Extreme Rules. In September, WWE began playing in a capella version of White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane at live events and during commercial breaks of televised shows while also hiding QR codes in various locations on episodes of Raw and SmackDown. Each code led to special websites containing imagery, mini-games, and riddles that were all seemingly connected to Extreme Rules. Event No matches took place on the Extreme Rules kickoff pre-show, however, WWE Hall of Famer Jerry Lawler, along with the Philadelphia Eagles cheerleaders and the mascot of the Philadelphia 76ERS, Franklin the Dog, came out and revealed the logo of WrestleMania XL, scheduled for Philadelphia at the nearby Lincoln Financial Field in April 2024. Preliminary Matches The pay-per-view opened with the Brawling Brutes facing Imperium in a six-man tag team good old-fashioned Donnabrook match. During the match, Imperium dominated the Brawling Brutes. Imperium later isolated Butch by taking out Sheamus and Holland, however, Sheamus later recovered, took out Vinci and Kaiser, and then proceeded to brawl with Gunter in the ring. Holland and Butch later recovered and joined Sheamus into viciously attacking Gunter. Sheamus performed a brogue kick on Gunter, however, Vinci voided the pin attempt. As Sheamus then applied the cloverleaf on Gunter, Kaiser attacked Sheamus with a shillelagh. Butch performed a reversed springboard from atop a barrel onto Kaiser, Vinci, and Holland. Gunter attacked Sheamus with a shillelagh for a near fall. In the closing moments, Holland and Butch attacked Kaiser and Vinci with shillelaghs while Sheamus performed a Celtic cross on Gunter through an announce table. Butch and Holland then held Vinci in place allowing Sheamus to perform a brogue kick on Vinci to win the match. Backstage, while The Miz was interviewed regarding the attacks and home invasion by Dexter Loomis, he was distracted by Gritty, the mascot of the Philadelphia Flyers of the National Hockey League. Gritty then handed an Extreme Rules shirt to Miz, however, Miz dropped and stomped on the shirt before departing. Next. Liv Morgan defended the SmackDown Women's Championship against Ronda Rousey in an Extreme Rules match. Rousey prevented Morgan from reaching a baseball bat that was near the ring post. Morgan then retrieved the bat and attempted to strike Rousey with it, however, Rousey fended Morgan off. Rousey later obtained the bat and attempted to strike Morgan, however, Morgan sprayed a fire extinguisher on Rousey. Rousey then recovered and dominated Morgan. Morgan then retrieved the bat to finally use on Rousey only for Rousey to strike Morgan with a black belt. Morgan then attacked Rousey with a chair and performed a code red on Rousey using the chair for a near fall. Morgan performed a sentence on Rousey through a table for another near fall. As Morgan attempted another pin, Rousey countered and applied an arm submission on Morgan, who passed out to win the title for a second time. After that, Drew McIntyre faced Karayan Cross in a strap match. The referee fastened the strap around McIntyre's wrist, however, Cross refused, and with assistance from Scarlett, Cross attacked McIntyre before the match could officially begin. The two fought into the crowd before making it back to ringside. Back in the ring, McIntyre fastened the strap around Cross' wrist, Thus the match officially began. McIntyre viciously attacked and taunted Cross, however, Scarlett distracted McIntyre. Cross took advantage and attacked McIntyre. 
In the finale, as McIntyre attempted to perform a Claymore kick on Cross, Scarlett stood in front of McIntyre and incapacitated McIntyre with pepper spray. Cross then performed the cross hammer on a blinded McIntyre to win the match. In another backstage segment, while The Miz was on a phone call, Gritty appeared and taunted Miz again, who departed once again. In the fourth match, Bianca Belair defended the Raw Women's Champion against Bailey in a ladder match. Midway through, Belair performed a kiss of death on Bailey. As Belair ascended the ladder, Bailey's damage control stablemates Dakota Kai and Io Sky ran out and attacked Belair. Belair fended both off and performed a double KOD on Sky and Kai. Afterwards, Belair attacked Bailey with her ponytail and then performed a KOD on Bailey on a ladder. Belair then ascended the ladder to unhook the championship and retain the title. In the penultimate match, Edge faced Finn Balor in an I Quit match. Midway through the match, Edge and Baylor fought in the crowd where Edge attacked Baylor with a hockey stick and then applied a cross face on Baylor atop the kickoff podium table, Baylor refused to quit. The two eventually brawled back to the ring, where Baylor attacked the ribs of Edge with a chair. Baylor repeatedly attacked Edge with the chair, who refused to quit. As Baylor attempted to throw Edge into a chair wedged in the corner, Edge countered and sent Baylor in the chair instead. Edge attacked Baylor with the chair repeatedly and applied the Edge Kator on Baylor, however, Damien Priest ran out for the save. Dominic Mysterio also joined the fray, and Edge performed a spear on Baylor, who fell onto Dominic and Priest. As Edge was preparing to perform another spear on Baylor, Rhea Ripley appeared and handcuffed Edge to the top ring rope. With Ripley taunting Edge with the key, the Judgment Day then beat down a defenseless Edge. Baylor then attacked Edge with a kendo stick, however, Rey Mysterio came out wielding a chair for the save only for his son, Dominic, to attack his father Rey. Edge's wife Beth Phoenix then appeared to assist Edge and attacked Priest and Baylor with a kendo stick. A standoff ensued between Phoenix and Ripley which lead to a brawl between the two and Phoenix performing a spear on Ripley. Phoenix retrieved the key and freed Edge who then performed a spear on Priest and a low blow on Dominic. Edge performed three spears on Baylor while signaling Phoenix to retrieve a chair, however, Ripley struck Phoenix with brass knuckles. Baylor then performed three coup de graces on Edge, who refused to quit. Ripley then positioned Phoenix for a concerto and Edge reluctantly proclaimed I quit to save Phoenix, thus Baylor won the match. Following the match, despite Baylor winning, Ripley still performed the concerto on Phoenix. Referees, WWE backstage personnel, and Ray, who later recovered, then tended to Edge and Phoenix. In a final backstage segment, Miz tried to enter Triple H's office, however, Gritty appeared once again and taunted Miz. Miz snapped and attacked Gritty, however, Dexter Loomis, appeared behind Miz and applied a chokehold on Miz. Loomis then assisted Gritty to his feet, who kicked Miz before walking away with Loomis. Main Event In the main event, Matt Riddle fought Seth Freakin Rollins in a fight pit match with Daniel Cormier as the special guest referee. The match started with Riddle brawling with Rollins and slamming him into the cage walls. As Cormier tried to restore order, Riddle accidentally punched at Cormier, who warned Riddle not to fight with him. Rollins took advantage of the distraction and attacked Riddle with vicious knee strikes. Riddle performed a triangle submission on Rollins who poked the eye of Riddle. Rollins then threw Riddle face first into the steel cage wall. As Cormier checked on Riddle, Rollins shoved Cormier who then also warned Rollins not to touch him. Both eventually climbed to the elevated platform around the top of the cage where Riddle performed an RKO on Rollins, who rolled off the platform and fell down in the ring. Riddle then performed a Broden splash from the elevated platform on Rollins who was laying in the ring. In the end, Riddle applied the triangle submission on Rollins who tried to break the hold by hoisting Riddle up and slamming him into the cage walls and on the mat, but Riddle would not let go of the hold, 
causing Rollins to tap out, thus Riddle won the match. As Riddle celebrated on stage with Cormier, the lights in the arena went out, signaling that the White Rabbit mystery was about to be revealed. Bray Wyatt's voice was then heard singing the verse, He's got the whole world in his hands repeatedly as real-life versions of the Firefly Funhouse characters were shown in the crowd throughout the arena, including Huskos the Pig Boy, Mercy the Buzzard, Ramblin' Rabbit, Abby the Witch, a burnt fiend mask that was atop the announce table, and the fiend himself. A door was shown on the stage and a distorted video on the Titantron played depicting a dilapidated Firefly Funhouse set together with a distorted version of the Firefly Funhouse theme song playing in the background. The television set inside the Funhouse turned on and a masked figure, together with distorted imagery, appeared asking twice who killed the world, and answering you did then changing the answer to we did. Back in the arena, the door opened showing a bright blue illuminating light. The masked figure then walked out carrying Wyatt's signature lantern and unmasked to reveal himself as Wyatt and proclaimed I'm here before blowing out the lantern and ending the event with a picture of Wyatt's new logo, an upside-down firefly. This was Wyatt's first appearance since his release from his WWE contract in July 2021. Reception The event received generally mixed to positive reviews from critics, who praised the six-man Donnabrook match and the I Quit match the latter for its dark tone and ending, along with Michael Cole's commentary during the match, while the SmackDown Women's Championship match was criticized as the weakest of the event and the strap match was also criticized. The main event was moderately praised, with most feeling that more could have been done with the stipulation. The return of Bray Wyatt, however, was universally acclaimed for its mystery, build-up, and execution. Critics also praised the variety of stipulation matches, unlike the previous year's event, which only had one hardcore-based match. Aftermath Raw On the following episode of Raw, Damage Control vowed that the next time Bailey faced Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship, she would win the title. Later after Bailey lost to Candice LeRae, Kai and Sky ran out and attacked LeRae. Belair came out for the save but was outnumbered by damage control. Bailey would earn another match for the Raw Women's Championship by defeating Belair in a non-title match on the October 24 episode, thanks to a distraction by Nikki A.S.H., who returned to her previous persona of Nikki Cross. The title rematch was scheduled for Crown Jewel and stipulated as a last woman standing match. Also on Raw. Seth Freakin Rollins won the United States Championship, and was later scheduled to defend the title against Matt Riddle on the following week's episode. Rollins retained due to an accidental distraction by the returning Elias. Also on the following Raw, a match was booked for the following week between The Miz and Dexter Loomis with an added stipulation that if Loomis won, he would get a WWE contract, however, if Miz won, then Loomis would be banned from WWE. However, the match did not occur as Miz attacked Loomis with a steel chair during the latter's entrance, thus preventing Loomis from competing.